What is up guys? This is the third video in our navigation to series in ROS2. This video is actually about us running TurtleBot 3 simulation in Gazebo and understanding how navigation can be set up. But this video is not really about us coding from scratch to build our solution for navigation, but we will use existing packages to just demo simple navigation. The navigation demo in this video would look something like this. We'll understand how to use existing packages with no code right now to run this. Now in part one of the series, we were talking about two different components of navigation, broadly speaking. One was localization and the other one is mapping. In Gazebo simulation for TurtleBot 3, fortunately or let's say unfortunately, uh, odometry gives out really good values. So that means we don't have to work on localization. We get odometry values and those are very close to the ground truth for simulation, but we need to generate a map. So the part localization is already done again because the simulation gives out really good values for odometry. That's not the case for the real world. But the second part, which is mapping is something we need to do. So in this video, we'll run an example simulation, which looks like this, and then we'll first generate a map. And then after that, use all navigation packages to actually navigate. If you still don't understand this clearly, please just follow along and it will be clear for you. Now to set up this demo for navigation using TurtleBot 3 in simulation, this is all you need. So please run all these commands on your terminal to get all the corresponding packages. You need gazebo packages, you need navigation 2 packages, you need slam toolbox packages. You also need Python 3 VCS tool so that you can get all the corresponding TurtleBot packages from GitHub. One thing to remember is that this video also has a corresponding blog post. So if you want to spend more time on the textual format of this video, you can look at my medium blog post. I will add the link in the description to this video. Now, once you have ROS2 and you have set up your system using these commands, then let's move forward and run a TurtleBot simulation in Gazebo first. To do that, let's create a new workspace for TurtleBot. Let's go to SRC in that workspace. Here you need to first import all the TurtleBot packages which are open source. To do that, let's use VCS tool. To use the VCS tool and get all the TurtleBot packages, we will create a text file and then use VCS tool on top of that. Here inside SRC directory, you have TurtleBot3.repos. That is the text file I created just now. You have to do the following here. I've attached the link to the gist of this piece of code in the description of this video, but this will be used by VCS tool to get all the right TurtleBot 3 packages from GitHub. This file is for Galactic, but I want to use it on Humble, which is on my system. So I will change Galactic Devil to Humble in all the five. So I have my repos.txt file ready. I will now use VCS tool to get all the TurtleBot 3 packages from GitHub. Since we want all these packages inside our SRC directory, this is the command I'll use. So I have all the right TurtleBot 3 packages in my system. Now I'll build my workspace with Colcon. I've cleared my screen before I build everything. Now remember that you should not do it from your SRC directory, but go back to your workspace. And from here, you need to do Colcon build. This will take some time, but all the 16 packages will be built. Okay, so we have all 16 packages built. You see three packages has std error output. These are warnings, so don't worry about that. If for some reason you have any CMake errors or any kind of errors, look at the blog post I added in the description of this video. There I talked about any potential errors you might see. With this, we have everything in place to run a simulation with a world in Gazebo and a total bot inside it. So let's try that. To launch a world in simulation along with a TurtleBot, you first have to export the Gazebo model path for TurtleBot. And this is how you do it. You don't need to remember all of this, of course. This is added in the blog post. You have to export the model for TurtleBot as well. After that, you can source your workspace. Now you're ready to run your base simulation. I'm running TurtleBot3 Gazebos, launch file TurtleBot3 underscore world dot launch dot pi.
Okay, so we have a simulation running with a world and a turtle bot inside it. If for some reason this doesn't happen and you have any error, please look at the blog post again. You have to make sure this step was successful. Without this, we cannot move forward in the video and even the next video is based on at least this part, right? We will code from scratch after this, but this part has to be common because we are doing everything in simulation. That means we need this base. Okay, so our simulation side of things is done. Now, as I said before, we do not want to work on localization, which is one pillar of navigation because odometry gives out really good values for total bot simulation. So we skip localization. We work on mapping. What do we need to do? We need to create a map. So this is how we create a map. Open up a new terminal and launch slam toolboxes online async launch. This will help us create a map. Okay, so this is done. In another terminal, launch always. Don't worry about these errors. You have always here. In always, you need to add three different visualizations. Laser scan, map and transform. So I've added all three. Let's put the right topics there. In laser scan, the topic is scan. In map, the topic is map. Okay, so you are now almost ready to start creating your map. There's only one other thing you need, that is teleop. Because when creating a map, you need to control the robot so that it moves from one point to the other and it can see different parts of the map or of the world. So we run teleop in another terminal. This is how you do it. Everything is written in the blog post as well. Okay, so now to create a map, you need to start moving the robot here and there. First, decrease the speed using Z. Now let's put Arvis and Gazebo simulation side by side for better visualization. Okay, so I can visualize everything now. Let's move the robot. Let's reduce the speed a little bit more. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to move the robot such that it sees different areas of the world and creates a map and you can see all of that in always. I will quickly do all of that, but this is what you need to do. Okay, so I am done with creating the map. What do we do next? We want to save this map and use it as a static map when we are doing navigation. For that, you open up a new terminal and use map servers, map saver CLI. We want to save the files as map in our home directory. Okay, so it says map saved successfully. You have your metadata in your YAML file. So home, uh, this is my home directory and map.yaml. So if you see, you have map.pgm, which is your map and map.yaml, which is the metadata. Now for a proper project, you need to store them in the right directory, not in your home directory. This is just an example. That's why I'm storing it in the home directory. At this point, you're done with your localization and your mapping. We actually can start navigation now. So to do that first, let's close everything apart from your gazebo simulation. So we close our viz, we close our map server, we close teleop. We also close our slam toolboxes uh, tool to create your map. Now we can start navigating. For navigation, we can use nav to bring up package. That's something we installed initially. Open up a new terminal. And this is the command to launch your nav to bring up, which is the core of your navigation. This launches everything needed by navigation, which would include all the navigation behaviors, all the recovery behaviors, whatever you can think about navigation, AMCL, everything is done. You just need to provide the right path to your map. We created a map in our home directory, right? Home, my name, map dot 
YAML. So this is all we need to do. Let's run this. We see that something is running, but it says invalid frame ID for map. We'll solve this in a bit. Let's first open another terminal to visualize everything. We will use always again to visualize everything, of course. Now, instead of just running always too, we will run always with a predefined uh, configuration. That configuration is just taken from nav to bring up package. Again, you can look at the blog post to copy this. So you have your always launched with all the configuration. So you didn't need to add anything in displays. Everything was done because we used the configuration file already available in uh, uh, this package. Let's reduce the size of this. Now, if you go to your previous terminal, which was for nav2, you see that you still have this issue which says invalid frame ID map. That is because AMCL is not providing any map transformation or uh, map to odometry transformation. That is only because AMCL did not get any initial position of the robot. Let's provide an initial position of the robot to AMCL. How do we do that? We first see where the robot is, which is somewhere here. And then in your always, you click on 2D pose estimate and copy this as much as you can in the map. You don't need to be extremely precise, but you should be as close as possible to the ground truth value. So it looks something like this. So your AMCL is initialized. Now you don't see that error anymore, right? That is because map to odometry transformation is available. So we have done everything required to start navigating. Let's adjust all of this first. In this demo, we are not using any code, but only using GUI, we will make the robot navigate. For that, we click on nav to goal and give the goal pose. Now you see that the robot has started navigating. This is the idea behind a simple demo using nav2. This video was for us to understand what components are needed for navigation. We needed all the packages in our system. We needed uh, gazebo running with TurtleBot simulation. We understood that we don't have to do much for localization explicitly because odometry values are really good for TurtleBot 3 simulation. We created a map and then we understood that all of this put together leads to navigation. This is all there is for this video. This was a very simple video where we did not have to do much, but this serves as a base for us to start making something from scratch in the next video. Everything else in this series from now on won't be as simple as this because we will have to code, we will have to make everything from scratch. You have to make sure that whatever we did in this video is successful on your system because only if Gazebo along with your TurtleBot inside Gazebo simulation is running properly, we can do anything. If that is not working, please look at my blog post. It will help you understand how to fix issues. Unfortunately, there are sometimes any dependency issues. And because of that, the issue might not be covered in the blog post itself because I did not face that issue and I don't know about that issue. If that is the case, you might have to resort to a lot of Google searching, a lot of looking at different uh, ROS blog posts. But please make sure this is running. This was again a simple video. We will build on top of that. And from now on, we will start coding everything. So I hope this video served a good purpose for you to set everything up on your system. And let's build on top of that in the next video. So hope this was informative for you. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.